Rachel. Hi. Hi. <laughs> so Rachel, I I really am I'm happy, happy to have you do an interview. I'm truly, truly happy to meet you. I'm meet happy. you in, yeah. in in it's not in the flesh, I almost said in the flesh, but that's almost. tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. Uh I want to introduce Rachel to the audience. There's a lot of subscribers to this channel, but Rachel has been interviewed, and I recommend you go see it with my Krinder and Leah. And she told some of her story there, a lot of her story, but I've got probing questions, which I <laughs> and and Rachel has become a free spirit. She's willing to just dive in and answer. She has no, she has no boundaries or parameters or fear of knowledge reports. So <laughs> <laughs> it it really is a snitching culture, right? The, the, the whole culture is suck up to the hierarchy and report report your best friend and da, da, da. Okay, so let's just describe who Rachel is. Rachel was in the Sea Org around 20 years or maybe more jump in and correct me on anything i say wrong it was a little less than that it was about 15 16 years but okay but it felt like more than 20. <laughs> <laughs> and she became david miscavige's personal photographer she's very talented in the world of photography people don't realize what technology there is you don't just take a thing and snap a button. <laughs> There's huge amounts of tech behind it. So Rachel traveled around the world constantly. She was not stuck in the prison of int base, gold base. She was a gypsy, a traveler around here yes. and there. And <laughs> here's the thing, Rachel. Here's the thing. The cult floated a rumor that they've completely canceled coerced abortions. And I want, since you left remarkably nearer present time than a lot of others who left 10 years ago, 15 years ago, I want you to tell me that I was cynical, but the truth, no more coast, have all the babies you want. Tell me about that. <clears throat> It has not gone away. The language has become different. Um, the language and how one would be pushed into getting an abortion has changed to be legally safer. So the only there the only change is the language in which one can go about forcing an abortion. So mm. uh, what I mean by that is be. Things do change uh, due to outside pressure. I did observe things, things, uh, bad actions and negative action, actions and negative situations and circumstances are tempered uh, to a degree because of outside pressure from people like you. Um, but they don't fundamentally change enough usually, right? So will I say it's better that someone has to be spoken to with a certain type of legal legal speak in place when they're being pushed towards having an abortion. Yes, I believe that's better. But to say that it has gone away and that doesn't happen uh, is disingenuous and untrue.
So it's friendly persuasion rather than you're you're in treason, you're in lower no, conditions. No, you're in treason, you're in lower conditions. You're in treason. Oh, but even now you're in lower conditions. 100%, yes. Oh, my 100%, God. 100% you are in oh treason. My God. If you decide Ooh. to stay and you have the abortion, you are in the condition of treason. If you leave and decide to have the baby, you are in a condition of treason. Oh, wow. When I got out, I, I, I spoke to someone whose name I will not share. Um, because they are still, they are still, um, their family is all connected, right? This person said, got on the phone to me crying, said, I'm, I, I had, it was so hard. I never got to say goodbye to you and other people I knew when I left, but my wife got pregnant and, um, I was called in, um, to ethics and told, your 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 effing wife i'm trying not to swear right because the way wow. that these these uh, these uh spiritual leaders speak can be quite uh graphic <laughs> um but your effing wife wife got you know effing pregnant and it's too effing late to do anything about it so you both have to leave mm. um because we, she didn't say anything in time to do anything about it and, and in time to do the right thing. So wow. doing the right thing means getting an abortion. And, and, and uh, he was getting yelled at um, mm. because his wife had not come forward in time to do the right thing, which means to get an abortion. So you are 100%. You are pulled off of your post. You're pulled mm. off of your job. Mm. You are isolated. And, th and absolutely you get pregnant, you are getting an interrogation, uh, security check, whatever, a hundred percent. It is, it is an ethics offense. It is considered it's... that you are doing it on purpose. Mm. Well, um, I, I've yeah. been told gold base in base is down to like 275 at the peak. They had like a thousand seal. <laughs> it's weighing down. And the ticket out people learned was get pregnant, get pregnant and get offloaded, offloaded over the years. There was an erosion of CO members departing because of pregnancy. So they clamped down on it. But you told me something remarkable. It made me gobsmacked when we were chatting uh, yesterday. And that was interface management have coerced female staff members on the base to put a device, a contraceptive device in their vaginas known as an IUD. All in base females. Oh, wait a moment. Now let me you, we didn't I didn't totally ask you that. There is a, a contraception where they implant something in your arm and it lasts for eight years. It's not that they were it, it wasn't it wasn't that and I, I can't speak to all women because I I wasn't in the habit of going and having, I wasn't an, an ethics person. I wasn't a personnel person. I wasn't in the habit of going and speaking with everyone, but um, this is a, they would basically, we were told um, you have to go, you ha in order to be married, in order to be married. And in some instances, I was told by certain individuals in order to remain married, either the male has to get a vasectomy um, but uh, I did hear of one instance where one guy was told, you can't get married. We won't approve you getting married until you get a vasectomy. Um, you don't hear that towards men very often. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I, and, and not to make light of it, because I don't I don't think anyone should be forcing anyone else to have uh, to make those decisions. Right. Mm -hmm. you, you it just it's an absolute human rights violation. Absolute. Did males yeah. at Gold go get a vasectomy that you know of? I don't. The person that I knew of was actually um, had been um, mad hatter and ended up in Florida and was told this. Um, mm -hmm. So I don't know. I did not discuss this. I, for me, the no male was targeted. In my instance, it was, you know, this is who you're going to marry and this is who you can be married to and it's approved right now. But before you do that, before it's approved, you have to get an IUD. Uh, which is the, the name of a device which is put in surgically and intra, you go to, 
intrauterine, intrauterine de- device, uh, device, device, IUD. So yes. the church. And another girl to told you. me it happened to her as well, and she had horrible side effects from it. I, I'm, I'm sure like you could go and do something else like this. This eight year thing probably also would be an option. But I was, I, it's you shouldn't be taking your staff members and having medical conversations like that in a workplace and saying in order to stay on your job and in order to have a relationship, you have to go through this medical procedure. Unbelievable that management can order what a woman does with her vagina. Mm-hmm. But, um, this is a, this is why tax exemption has, that's why they have to lose their tax. If they were a business, you would not you believe the multi-million dollar lawsuits from hungry lawyers looking for malfeasance. For, employers cannot order something like that. They and it is, a, it is it. a business. It just pretends not to be a business. Absolutely. That was Absolutely. filming things that made a lot of money. It's a, it's a hundred percent a business. Yes. It's like a if business. you just call it like it is. Not that yeah. I... And I will say the tax exempt thing. Yes, absolutely. Go for it. I believe there should be laws in place that no religion, even if they are a religion, can treat people that way. Mm. Right. I just I just don't believe it should be allowed, whether you're a tax exempt group or not. I, mm. I just believe that type of treatment should should not happen. And absolutely 100 percent today, women are having abortions that they don't actually want to have. And the the conversation is okay you know uh let's say i'm talking to s- theoretical made up person sally mm-hmm. you've you've become pregnant you're off of post legally because of things that have happened we cannot tell you to have an abortion but you can't stay if you don't um here's the policy read this policy here's your ethics program you're going to be isolated you're not going to eat with the other people you're going to do you know, in this little, be going in this little room and do these programs until you decide to do uh, the right thing. We hope you decide to do the right thing, but we can't tell you. Uh, the right thing is abortion. Mm-hmm. Yes, but there, but if you go around and you recount that, the girl comes out crying after, you know, this, this ethics, these ethics programs that are designed to mm-hmm. change your thinking and mm-hmm. comes out the other side and says, okay, I'll do it, gets sent mm-hmm. off to do it alone maybe doesn't even tell the, 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 the husband, um, you know, doesn't tell the, they can't, can't call their own mother, uh, for support or their own family member outside for support has to keep it really quiet, has to go do this procedure, uh, which is quite a serious surgery, um, and has to then deal with it and do the, do the conditions. Um, you know, they recount that afterwards and because someone goes in there and says, we can't tell you to have an abortion. Mm. They can't go and then legally say I was forced. But it's mm-hmm. the same way that I was told you can leave the doors open. You can leave anytime you want. You won't make it out there. No one will hire you in Hollywood because we have connections to everyone. You won't have any money. Everyone that you know will disconnect from you. But the door is open. You mm. can leave anytime you want because mm. legally, Someone interviews me, I have to tell that law enforcement person or that lawyer or that judge or whoever it is, I have to say, well, they technically told me you can leave. Mm -hmm. And technically there are times of day day when I could walk out through it through a door. Mm -hmm. Technically, I mean, I would have security people and people with their bodies standing in front of me to stop me. Mm -hmm. They're trained to stand in front of me, put their hands on my shoulders and sit me back down in that chair. Mm -hmm. But they're saying, oh, you can leave because they've been told legally they have to say, oh, you can you can get you can keep the baby. Oh, Mm -hmm. you can leave anytime you want. If we it's like if we say it, we can do the same old things we've always done. But we're saying a statement. That covers our asses and it's just CYA Mm -hmm. cover your ass. It's it's Mm -hmm. legal cover your ass. But the same procedures are going are, are, are going on. Um, just with slightly more complicated yeah. language yeah. surrounding. Yeah, yeah, it's it's a cover up to get off the hook. You know, Rachel, I wanted to just tell you how all this abortion. How, most religions want future generations. They want you. Oh, the Church of LDS love you to have twelve kids, fourteen kids, fifteen kids. 
Catholic Church, no country, you know, most religions think, oh, we want these happy little new Roman Catholics being born. Most religions want clutters and masses of kids. Let me tell you how this happened. I, as you know, I was on the ship with Hubbard for a few years, right? I was I was earlier generation than you. And <laughs> on a ship on the high seas with no OBGYN and no if the baby presented itself breach or so, something went catastrophically wrong and you're out in the ocean because sometimes a, a, a delivery is spontaneous. They, they think mm -hmm. it's going to be September 5th and it's not till it comes two weeks early or whatever. There were no doctors. There were no, there was no facilities on a ship. So Hubbard put out this abortion thing only because we were far from any land. I mean, we did land and we did birth and port and stuff, but we were tra constantly traveling. So it made sense that you might be endangering a birth and the messengers who were so highly trained and he needed them and all that. So that's how it started. But Hubbard allowed you when you were nearer six, seven months nearing to go work on a land base. And you and your husband, with a lot of blessings from Harvard, went to what was called a CLO. No, it was called FOLO in those days. Mm -hmm. And now it's called CLO. And um, so the power of choice was, and, and you weren't treated like a leper. You weren't, you didn't have all this isolated from crew, shame on you, you got pregnant. There was nothing shameful. In fact, Hubbard would often give some very nice gifts when the baby was born. His personal office would send flowers and congratulate. Hubbard would congratulate you on, I'm not trying to say Hubbard was warm and fuzzy. I know Hubbard's darker side, but the miscavige treatment of pregnancy is nothing short of brutality. Now, I will tell a secret that probably no one knows. Rachel called me from her Blackberry way before she came out and talked to Mike and Lear and, and Mitch Brisker and all these people. She actually called me to say she wanted to escape. You see, they weren't monitoring her Blackberry. And she wasn't. And I ran it by a couple of people. I, I, my urge was to help, but they said, ooh, this is an ambush. There's no such thing as somebody already in the Sea Org asking you to escape. And you you can you you told me you were watching my videos way before because you had all this freedom. You were here, there, and everywhere across the globe. You could you could watch the internet like a hawk. A lot of people sat and just studied for for years or did little projects here and there for years. I'm not that style and and I had a skill that was needed and was useful. So I was like, hey, let me get a crew. Uh, a bunch of gear was given to me. I was responsible for this group gear and these this uh, these other couple of people. And we flew around the world filming things. Uh, the internet existed, but it wasn't, it was like, yeah, the internet, we can deal with the internet, okay? The internet blew up with, in terms of like um, a, a lot of, individuals speaking out and mm -hmm. uh raising mm -hmm. concerns and things um the bbc show happened all this stuff was going on right and it wasn't um it was deemed that it was never a safe time for us all of us uh int trainees to move to golden era so i spent years working for golden era but mm -hmm. out and around the world for the majority mm -hmm. of the time i only mm -hmm. was at that base for very short um blips of time um, but I was working with those people from gold or being, and I was directly reporting to gold. So mm -hmm. the gold was considered inch. So if I were to go to middle management or continental management or a church or a mission or a group out in the field, I was run by an authority that was way higher than them. And mm -hmm. they usually to be able to go to someplace like Int, almost everybody else involved was like, way more experienced mm -hmm. um, with Scientology. And I, I just, I wasn't, I was like really new, really green. Like they were, uh, mm -hmm. 
they were interrogating me with a security check on, you know, COB, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, who is that? I, I didn't even know. I didn't even know who it was. They're like David Miscavige. I'm like, who's that? Like, I didn't, I didn't know. And they're like asking me all these questions. I'm like, I don't understand what these questions mean. Like I didn't even get, I, I was just green, but they, but I was wanted because, you know, I had a lot of fire and energy and I could figure things out and um, I could, I could shoot things. Like I shot a bunch of stuff and it came back and um, the people at gold, which was probably Mark Headley at the time, the review was, wow, she doesn't suck. Like she's actually shooting cool stuff. So that put me in this position. I then grabbed two people who I thought were really cool, both of whom were pretty, really new um, into the SEER organization. So they hadn't been indoctrinated into those ways. And we just bopped around planet earth, uh, country to country, you know, flying a hundred thousand miles a year, um, seeing all this stuff. So a lot of the times we were not behaving under the rules that other SEERG members would behave under, but we didn't even know that, that about that. Like we had, I grabbed two newbies and I was a newbie and we were all talented and good at what we did. So we just zoomed around, you know, living our lives and the infrastructure wasn't in place. Like our first report line was sending emails on Gmail, which you'd mm -hmm. never do, <laughs> do now, you know, and they're like Western unioning us money. And like, so we can survive and, Paris. And, you know, it was, it was, it was wild. And so we never ended up, uh, it took many years for us to then be grabbed and, and, and contained, mm -hmm. um, you mm -hmm. know, so it, it was a very different experience than most people have. And I didn't realize I was interacting with individuals who were under, under duress, mm -hmm. um, the way that mm -hmm. now I know that they were, mm -hmm. and they yeah. wouldn't tell us cause we were from gold and it's this if anyone told something to me, they'd get in trouble. Right. Mm -hmm. So I would just, I was this new person that didn't even know that much about Scientology running around with the camera who would land in a, in a, in a, in a city and out, outrank everybody. So no one would question us and they would just do whatever we needed to do. And, mm -hmm. and that was that, you know, I get the picture. There's one adjective that encapsulates or describes the cultural conduct of the cult of Scientology, and that is paranoia. All this interrogation, this is, this, these people are not going into the CIA. <laughs> these people are not going into highly sensitive missions to assassinate a president in Latin America. These are just going to gold to do <laughs> Film films stuff. and stuff. Like, <laughs> yeah. So he here's the thing, Rachel. Here's, here's what I resent. Here's what I really resent. When you walk into any church, they tell you their doctrines. You walk into Christ Christ the Bibles are everywhere. There's no secret that they believe that Jesus was crucified that when they went to the tomb, his body had vanished, he had risen from the dead, blah, blah. Right from day one, you know their doctrines. Even, even, I mean, most religions are totally upfront to take it or leave it. If you want to join us in fellowship, whether you're Pentecostal, Seventh-day Adventist, Episcopalian, blah, blah. There's no secret confidential levels, none. Mm -mm. In Scientology, till you're $150,000 into it and you got all your family in, now on OT3 they reveal it's exorcism that we believe in. We're going to make you sane and a superman by booting out and jettisoning these pesky attached spirits that are glummed onto you and then you will become this great OT operating Thetan by expelling the jettisoning the BTs. That's not fair. It's a bait and switch. In fact, lately, I've been using the sentence, Scientology is a Trojan horse. Mm -hmm. Total deception. The Trojan horse came it's along. A, it's a bait oh, and switch. Huh? Yeah. 
the bait when the, the horse opens up this yeah. the osa maliciousness the hatred all of this is so hidden scientology is a trojan horse cult keeping all their dark devious secrets embedded in the horse any mm -hmm. comments yeah i mean i think that um i think that I believe that people should be allowed to believe what they want to believe and practice what, what they want to practice mm -hmm. and ph philosophically, religiously, et cetera, where I say that I'm going to start trying to put a stop to something that's going on is, or, or uh, say that there should be some regulations here, or I'm going to speak out against it um, is when that individual or that group starts violating the rights of others so if you're mm -hmm. going to start violating human rights you know that's not okay right mm -hmm. so um i believe that there's a lot of inherent rights violations built into the structure and the way that the operating basis is um the the mo of both uh administrative and technical technologies and that's what the issue is, right? If you, if if someone wants to go and believe, um, be, a lot of religions have really thing beliefs that are very wild. That yes. um, if you come in as an outsider, I've traveled all over the world. I have worked with so many different religions, right? So I I don't care if you want to believe that there's you know spirits attached to you. I don't care if you want to believe that the earth is 5,000 years old. I don't, you know, I don't believe it, but you need to respect my right to not believe mm -hmm. that, not practice that. But when you're, when you're having that belief and you're now, um, you know, holding, holding people, you know, violating people's rights with not letting them leave kidnapping type stuff, abusive type stuff. Um, and, and when you're selling it for mm -hmm. a lot of money, um, to the detriment of a person to the point where, you know, fundraisers are behaving in such a way that they're taking out lines of credit that for you, uh, fraudulently mm -hmm. filling out forms, um, to, you know, cr crush regging, hit hitting you real, so hard for money that you're going to mortgage your house. To, when, when that religion is saying, Hey, you can't, you can't talk to your child anymore. You can't mm -hmm. talk to your, your mom anymore. You can't talk to your brother anymore. You need to get a divorce. You need to get have an abortion. Like all these things. When that kind of thing is happening, then it's not okay. So for me, I don't. I don't really care about the beliefs. I. It, it doesn't. Um, I'm. There's a. There's so much. There's so much there that I'm like. Well, I don't believe in it. But I think there's other religions that have beliefs that are just as 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 wacky, right? But to 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 involve all this money and this high level of control, mm. it, it, it violates even the things that are being done with money. They're violating human rights and civil rights of individuals. And that's where I have, I have a problem. I have a problem with it. And I'm kind of like, believe in the flying spaghetti monster. If you want to, I, I don't care. That is your right. I will support, I will show up at, on a, on a, on a, at a March and March holding a sign for your right to practice your religion right up to that, to the moment that you start violating my rights or mm -hmm. my friend's rights or someone else's rights, you know? Mm -hmm. So I, I think it comes down to, to that. And um, you absolutely uh, have the right to speak and say, you don't philosophically believe in it. Right. So mm -hmm. the, the fact that, that someone experiences this and pays a lot of money for it, and then there, they will be attacked and maligned and followed and fired from their job and separated from their family because they don't, they can't get on here and make a Yelp review about o their OT8 experience. They mm. have the right to make a Yelp review. They have a right to go mm. online and, 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 and say that they aren't happy with it. Um, that is their right. And, and to attack someone for doing that is a violation of human rights. So for me, it's about that more than it is about the plausibility or uh, the believability 
of the uh, spiritual aspects of it, if that if that makes okay. sense. Well, there was an Australian senator called Senator Xenophon. People went Xenophon, Xeno, X E N P H O N, and he oh, no. summed up what you just said in a wonderful sentence. He said, "In Australia, you can believe whatever you want to believe. You simply cannot do." whatever you want to do, it's called mm -hmm. the law and no one exactly. is above it. So uh, he precisely put in one sentence, you can believe whatever you want to believe. My issue on that is the deception and bait and switch instead of right as you walk in the door explaining we are an exorcism religion. Yeah, yeah. what you're going to do when you come to the higher levels that are all super confidential and all this mumbo jumbo, we're going to teach you to expel and jettison out of your system attached beings. The hiddenness and deception, they can believe what they want to believe, but they also Trojan horse it and, and have it all yes. secret. And you've got to get RTC clearance and on free ones. Oh my God. They, the amount of clearances you have to get to get to OTH is, and then you and you have to and you have to agree to abide by rules that do violate right so you to to be able to even set foot on that ship you have to to do those levels you have to agree to not read anything you have to agree to have chunks of the internet and and books off your reading list right i i believe mm -hmm. as an adult you should be able to read whatever book you want to read. 